Hello everyone, I'm Sarah Smith with Fable Vision, and we are so happy to be with you all today. Fable Vision is a media art studio. We create animations, games, short films, and lots of other projects. At the same time, we are passionate about helping young people to discover their journeys and to find out what makes them come alive. We do this through a number of ways, curriculum, teacher professional development, and a number of creative classroom tools. We have some special guests today to uh, talk to you from our studio uh, about the world of animation and media arts. And it actually all started in a seventh grade classroom. So first, I want to introduce you to Peter H. Reynolds, New York Times bestselling author and illustrator and founder of Fable Vision. I wrote The Dot almost two decades ago. It's a story about a little girl who is afraid to make her mark and she has a teacher who thinks differently in more ways than one and that teacher encourages Vashti to make her mark and amazing things happen because of that and I was lucky enough to say thank you to one of my teachers who changed my life uh, by dedicating the book The Dot to Mr. Matson. He was my seventh grade math teacher who dared me to make my mark. I was an incessant doodler in school and not every teacher appreciated that and they would tell me to do it on my own time, don't draw on my class, um, pay attention and focus. And my math teacher he noticed that I was interested in art and storytelling and he said, um, Peter, I want to talk to you after class. And we had this conversation and it was just a short conversation, but it was one of those conversations that changed my life. He said, Peter, I noticed that you love to draw and you have a great imagination. You're a storyteller. How would you like to teach math using your art and your storytelling? And, uh, I went home, I looked through the textbook, and I found a math concept that I could teach to another student. I created a comic book, and I came in and I showed Mr. Matson, and he took a look at it very quietly, and then he said, Peter, do you know what you've done? I made a comic book. He said, well, it's called a comic book, but it's also called a storyboard. It's what a filmmaker uses to, to plan out a film. Uh, how would you like to take your storyboard and turn it into an animated film? film. And uh, I couldn't believe this was happening. Here I am, I'm 12 years old. My math teacher is suggesting that I create an animated film based on a story that he inspired me to write. And of course I said yes. And uh, he surprised me because he said, um, actually, I don't know how to make one. Uh, but something cool happened. He said, uh, let's learn together. And he went to the high school and he found a teacher, Mr. Uh, Morrow, Jim Morrow, and he came down to the junior high and he taught uh, my teacher and myself how to make an animated film. And this is back in 1973, so it was very difficult. It was a, a camera on a tripod and we uh, had all the characters cut out. We had to move each character, take three frames, move the character, take three frames, send it off to Kodak. We had to wait three weeks for it to come back in the mail and we had to edit it together with splicing tape and we finally ran it through the projector and we got to watch this film. Uh, and so at age 12, I made my very first animated film to teach. And uh, it uh, inspired me to take my art and my storytelling and to do something with it. And I discovered that animation and filmmaking was a great way to share ideas and scale messages. And uh, here I am today, my company is Fable Vision and we are an animation company uh, and now of course interactive company as well. And we make uh, interactive applications and animations and we employ over 40 artists, writers, programmers and um, it's an amazing studio. And I have a teacher to thank for that because I can trace it right back to my math teacher who noticed me. He noticed my, my energy and talent and he connected the dots 
to animation and storytelling and that changed my life. So what you just saw is one of Fable Vision's reels, some of the projects and work that we've done throughout the years. And it's really cool to realize that it all came to be because of Peter's seventh grade teacher, who recognized his talent and motivation and developed it and guided it. And what he did wasn't just to teach Peter the technical aspects of animation, it was to bring out his creativity his confidence, his belief that he could make amazing things. And that's what we think arts education can and should be about. When we engage in art, we're also practicing creative skills like visioning, risk-taking, flexible thinking, and iterating, the kinds of skills we need in all parts of our lives, no matter what our profession is. So I'd like to introduce a few of the people on the art team at Fable Vision to share about what they do and the skills they use as professionals in media art. Uh, hi, my name is Dee Dee Hatcher. I'm a lead animator at Fable Vision. Uh, what I do is I animate a lot of the time. I actually draw and create the animations. I also, because I'm lead, I also lead projects when we have multiple people make sure that everything's running smoothly, I organize the files, I set things up. Um, sometimes I even create the entire film myself. An example of that is the most recent project I worked on, which is called The Word Collector. It was originally a book by Peter H. Reynolds and we made it into a film. So for that project, I took Peter's book and his art and I turned it into a film. And for that, I used his original drawings, which he did on the computer, so it was easier for me to animate on the computer. I took his art and I made all of it move. We had a sound score and voice acting, put all of it together. It was just me on the project. And then we ended up with an animated film of the book. And that is some of the things that I do. To work in an animation studio, you need to be very adaptable because at that studio like Fable Vision, we have a lot of variety of projects that we get. We use different tools, different software, different techniques. So you have to be able to adapt to a specific project, a specific situation, be able to learn quickly, adjust your strategy to match the project that you're working on. My name is Melissa Scheller. I am an associate producer here at Fable Vision, and an associate producer is the person who handles all of the different types of communication across different departments and skill sets. So, for example, on this one massive game, Keenville, we had to make content with the Georgia Center for Assessment. So we were communicating with them about what we needed and then channeling that to our programmers who had to turn what they were writing and what questions they were asking into game content and into something playable. We then have to communicate between the programmers and the artists and make sure that the artists know what they need to make and how that's going to work in the game environment. 
all of this involves a lot of back and forth, and a producer is the translator for all of that. To make it in the animation industry, you need to be a good communicator. Everything we do involves talking to other people. Nobody works alone. And if you want to make something good, you have to be able to collaborate. Hello, my name is Julie Oliveira. I am a production artist at Fable Vision Studios in Boston. Um, I do everything from um, UX UI design to character and background design to storyboards and um, animation as well. My favorite project to work on so far <laughs> at Fable Vision um, is definitely Wanderlight, which is an RPG that focuses on Catholic education. Um, for me, the most exciting part of this project was creating everything that goes into an RPG. Um, I did a lot of character design, um, I worked in Unity a lot and we sort of were like building this little miniature world sort of that reminded me of like playing with a dollhouse as a kid. Um, we had to make everything from buildings to trees to characters to raccoons to um, little food items, little inventory items, a backpack. Um, there's just so much that goes into a game of that scale and I think playing with all of these little pieces and getting to do so much different or so many different types of design on one project like you had everything from uh, working in Unity on layout design there was um, UX UI design, character design like all of those elements coming together and seeing everything um, just become this really fully fleshed out game, this really rich environment uh, and rich world. Um, and working on it with so many other talented people uh, just made it all the more satisfying. For me personally, I think coming into the studio and being a part of this team, uh, you really do get a chance to not only be creative every day and use your creative mind to contribute to what is already um, existing in within these projects, but you get to do something really special and you get to put yourself into these projects as well. You get to use your creativity in the sense of contributing to what already exists within a project, but then you also get to inject your own personality into it, and I think that's one of my favorite parts of working at such a diverse studio um, where our projects are usually, you know, different day to day or different week to week. What's really meaningful to me is that I get to bring my own ideas to the table. So, of course, you know, as a production artist, I I make the production art that's on the asset list, of course, but I am also sort of saying like, hey, I have an idea for this character or I have an idea for um, even an animation. Um, style or technique, can I can I try it out? Can we see if it's going to work? So a moment for me that was really special and unique was when we were sort of facing this problem of adding texture into an animated sequence and I was like, hey, like I did this in college, um, this is actually something I'm really familiar with, but not really many people at, at the studio were familiar with this method at the time. So for me, it was a really exciting and really like meaningful experience for me to be to be able to share this process that I knew really well with everyone else at the studio and to get to use it on one of our projects as well. Hello, everybody. My name is Bob Flynn and um, my role at Fable Vision is I head up the art and animation team. So, so I'm Fable Vision's director of art and animation. Um, I've been with the studio for 16 years now. And um, that gives you a sense of maybe how long ago I went to school for this stuff. Um, I started drawing, you know, at a very, very early age. Um, you know, as you know, as long ago as you know as I can remember. Um, and you know, throughout you know grade school, you know, I definitely enrolled um, in all the art classes that the school provided us, which you know was just kind of you know intro to art type of stuff. Um, I didn't really get into you know, any kind of course on animation until I went to college. 
Um, and this was in the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, and there was really one class that I took in like multimedia motion graphics where I was introduced to the software Flash, um, which we still use, believe it or not, at Fablevision to this day. So it's a really handy software. It's called Adobe Animate now. Um, but that was really my first exposure to animation and animation software. Um, and I was in art school at the time and I was going to be focusing um, mostly on like illustration. Um, but it was the software flash that really opened my eyes to the, you know, to the idea that one person really on their own can make a cartoon. And it was a revolutionary change in technology too. At the time it used to require all sorts of heavy, you know, large metallic, um, multi-plane cameras and things to, you know, to actually make a cartoon. And now you can just do it on your own computer. So pretty cool. My favorite animation project at Fablevision, I guess I'll mention a recent one. Um, we worked um, with this institution called UCAR, which is an acronym I probably should know what it means, but they basically study um, like weather and climate. Um, and so they came to Fablevision um, and they wanted us to make um, like a few dozen little short cartoons to explain about all sorts of kinds of weather phenomenon from like tornadoes to blizzards to hurricanes. And um, so we created a few fun little cartoon characters to help explain some of these things, if you can believe it. We made, we made a few shorts um, that featured like a little palm tree character to help explain about winds and hurricanes and things like that. And there was like a weather meteorologist um, who, who was like a Yeti, like a snow monster to help explain about all the all the things like uh, like the polar vortex and um, and how snowflakes are formed and how hail is formed and things like that. So it was really fun, and it was because um, one of the things that I really like about the work we do at Fablevision is we get to tell stories and help explain things in a funny and meaningful way. For me, creativity is all about play, and when I think about play, it has to do with like improvising and kind of making things up on the fly and thinking about. Um, you know, all sorts of different ways that you can solve a problem creatively um, and, and like efficiently. Um, and we have to do that a lot because, you know, oftentimes we don't have much time to get something done or there may not be like, like a ton of money in the budget. And so we have to think, to think outside the box in terms of how, you know, how you're going to get, um, you know, how you're going to get like a three minute animated film done in a few weeks. And so, um, I think sometimes when people hear the word play, they think it means that you're not working hard or you're not trying hard. You're just goofing around. But play for me is like when I get into a zone of just, um, you know, trying things out, experimenting, um, and thinking about how you can get something done in a way that everybody enjoys working on it. And, um, you know, and you also get it done on time. So that's how I use creativity at my job at English. Combining our two passions of creativity and learning, we realized we could utilize the treasure trove of knowledge and experience within our studio team to create meaningful, practical learning experiences for students. The first part of this endeavor was to create an animation program that even the youngest of learners could use and enjoy. That program is called Animation-ish. The ish part of the name is borrowed from Peter Reynolds' book called Ish, in which a boy learns to create freely without the burden of being perfect. He can be perfect-ish. And that's what we want students to learn from their first encounters with animation that it's okay to just go for it and make a mark and see where it takes you. It's okay to experiment and play and express what's inside you in new and interesting ways. So what Peter did when he was working on Animation-ish was to mask all of the complicated tools of a professional animation program and just start simply. The first level of Animation-ish only allows for three frames and only has a few tools. This is the first one we introduce, and no joke, it takes less than three minutes to become an animator and watch your first animated project. The next two levels each add a few more tools so that as the student grows in their skill, so does the program. 
Hi everyone, my name is Andrea Calvin and I'm with the Rental Center and Fable Vision Learning. So today we're going to talk about animation-ish. Now, I'm gonna tell you guys a little secret. I am not an animator. My background's in newspapers. I was a newspaper editor for seven years. I really love doing graphic design and layout, but drawing and animating is kind of something I struggle with. And you know what? With animation-ish, that's okay. Because if you can make a smiley face and you can make it move, you can make anything. So if you can make a little squiggle and make it wiggle, you can animate. And I'm gonna show you guys how. You're gonna see that this program has three levels of animation, wiggle doodle-ish, flipbook-ish, and advanced-ish. Also, you're gonna notice that this program was designed by Peter H. Reynolds author of The Dot, illustrator of the Judy Moody series, The Word Collector, um, the I Am Human, I Am Love, I Am Yoga series. And it was also designed in partnership with Fable Vision Studios, which is Peter's animation studio. So there's a lot of expertise that goes behind this program. And we're gonna jump into Wiggle Doodle-ish, which allows students to explore what can you make in three frames. So for this challenge, I think I'm going to start with a letter. So maybe, what can I do with the letter C? Can I turn that into something if I wanted to make an animated alphabet? Let's find out. So I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna change my brush size. I'm gonna select a different color by double clicking and I'm gonna start with a brown color, hit okay. And let's see, I'm going to start with a C. So that is the start of the letter C. And I'm gonna hit next. And you're gonna see that creates a new frame. And it shows a little bit of the frame before it on there. So you see a little, like, we call it an onion skin. So it allows you to trace over what the frame was there. So I'm gonna trace over, we're gonna make it a little different because in animation, stuff has to move. So I'm gonna start to see I'm gonna close the C and make a circle and hit next. And now I'm gonna completely circle, insert, I'm gonna completely make the circle, fill it in, and I'm gonna decorate this cookie. Maybe I'll add some chocolate chips, change the brush size, I'm gonna make some little dots on here. And so I started with a C, we're gonna go back. I started with a C, turned it into an O, and then turned it into a cookie. Now I'm gonna hit play and we're gonna see what happens. And you can see my letter C just turned into a cookie. So what other letters could you use? Could you turn an S into a snake? Could you turn a B into a butterfly? These are challenges that you can give to your students saying, okay, here's your letter. Can you animate how it would move? And animation-ish has been used in so many different ways in, in schools across the country, gosh, in schools across the globe. One of my favorite ways that it's been used, so I'm gonna hit save real quick. Um, we'll say cookie C, and that's just gonna save it so I can use it later. But one of my favorite ways that this has been used is there was a teacher and she used animation ish more so in the um, yes save more so in the flipbook ish side um, where you could have multiple frames but she used animation ish to have her students show the word resiliency how would you define this word what does this word mean to you and the students had that word and then they animated what it meant to them and it's just a really cool program to show what you know not everybody is great with their words. Some people are better at showing it through illustration. So that's what animation-ish allows students to do. In flipbook-ish, as I said, you can start with more levels. So I'm gonna draw an S, because I, I think I talked about making a, a snake, but you can have more frames in it. So I have an S, and if I wanna copy this frame and just edit it, I'm gonna hit duplicate frame, and that's gonna copy that frame that I have here. And I'm gonna move it, and I'm gonna copy it again. I'm gonna move it again. I'm gonna copy it again. And you can just keep doing this over and over and over again. 
play and loop and you can start to see the S move across the screen. Now maybe I'm going to add a face to the S, turn it into a snake and change the way the S is going to work. But with Flipbook-ish, you start using multiple frames and then you can do the loop. As, I, as you see here, I can do loop and have it loop through. So you can see how this animation is gonna go from one frame to the next frame and then show a completed animation. With, I'm not gonna save that one. With advanced dish, you're working with two different levels. So you have the foreground and the background. So maybe you're designing a starry night in the background and in the foreground, you have a rocket ship takeoff. So you're showing movement of the two levels of animation. Um, the other cool part you can do in this is I can go to my project vault where I can say open my projects and let's say, I know I had, I have the word bloom and I can open a project that I already worked on. So this is the word bloom and I decided I was going to show how it would bloom. So I have, I have it, you know, starting with letters and turning into a flower. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna share this because I love this word. I'm going to share it as an MP4 to send to like my grandma um, so they can see my project. Um, so I'm gonna say flower. And now that downloads the MP4 file that I can then email to my grandma or in this distance learning world, you can upload it to your Google Classroom and your students can show you what they have just completed. It's also a really cool way to have students work on one piece of an animation and then another student work on another piece of an animation. So you have different chapters of a story that can then be strung together in iMovie or another movie editing program. So it's a neat tool where students can show what they know and make their mark move. Now here are a couple of tutorials that we use to teach students how to start using the tools of Animationish. Hi there everybody, my name is Alex with FableVision and today I'll be showing you how to begin your animation adventure with Animation-ish. The first thing you will want to do is click on the big green circle that says Wiggle Doodle-ish. Then you should see a screen that looks like this. On the left, you're going to see a box named Tools with a few icons inside of it. These icons are the Select Tool, your Brush Tool, your Paint Bucket, and your Eraser. Even though it's probably not a good idea to get paint out with an eraser in real life, trust us, it works pretty great here. So at the top, it tells me to make a doodle. I'm going to go ahead and select my brush tool and draw my first creation. You can draw anything you like in whatever color you like, but for right now, I'm going to go to the palette on the right where you can choose your colors, select black, and draw a character I have named Sir Fishington. Don't be worried if you make a mistake while drawing either as the eraser tool and the undo button on screen have your back. Once you have your drawing looking the way you want it, you can go and click on the arrow labeled next. Now you're on the second frame of animation and you'll see a faded outline of what you just drew in the first frame. This is called the onion skin. Don't worry, it doesn't really exist in the second frame. It's just there for reference because the directions up top now say trace it. So that's what I'm going to do. You don't have to trace it perfectly. Actually, you want it to be just a little different. Maybe their mouth is open this time, or you move your creation a bit to the left, or draw some wind starting to blow by them. Whatever you do, as long as it's a bit different, you are well on your way to creating your animated masterpiece. Now we're going to draw our third and final frame of animation, so go and click the next arrow one more time. Once you trace your creation one more time, in a slightly different position, you are ready to see what your animation looks like by pressing the play button. The animation cycle will play on repeat until you choose to stop it. If you want to go back and change something, feel free to do so now by pressing the pause icon at the bottom right and using the back and next arrows to cycle through the three frames you've drawn. Once you're happy with your animation, then comes the moment you've been waiting for, the opportunity to share your animation with the world. Select the Save icon at the top, give your project a name, and then click the Yes Save button. This will save your animation in your project vault in Animation-ish. 
You can also click the icon labeled Share. To share, you have a few options. QuickTime, MPEG, MP4, Image Sequence, GIF, and Export. How you want to save your creation is up to you. I'm going to save my creation, Sir Fishington, as an MP4. The video of your creation should then download to your device, where you can find it to email or post on the internet. So, Sir Fishington, are you enjoying animation-ish so far? I sure am, Alex. Thanks for drawing me. <laughs> okay, everybody. That's all for this video. See you next time. Hello again, everybody. This is Alex with FableVision, here to show you how to start using another level on animation-ish called Flipbook-ish. Flipbook-ish is similar to Wiggle Doodle-ish in many ways, but whereas Wiggle Doodle-ish is used for making short three-frame looping animations, Flipbook-ish is best used to make slightly longer form animations, sometimes featuring events that only happen once, like a flower blooming. To get started, we just click on the icon called Flipbook-ish. You'll notice that the layout is very similar to Wiggle Doodle-ish, but with some cool extra features that will let you create those longer and more intricate animation projects. To illustrate what those cool new things are, I'll be animating a chicken hatching from an egg, but when you draw and animate your own project, it can of course be anything you want. So on my first frame, I'm just going to draw a simple little egg. Don't worry, it's organic. Uh, you know what? It doesn't look quite the way I want it. So I'm going to go over here and get the eraser tool, make it the size that I want using the brush size tool over here, and erase the top of my egg to make it look nicer. There's also the undo button if you need, but if you're just getting rid of a small piece of your drawing, the eraser tool can sometimes be the better option. Now that I've finally got it looking the way I want it, I can start animating. But as I animate it hatching, I don't think I'll want to redraw it every time. That's why instead of hitting the green plus to go to my next frame and start from scratch tracing around the onion skin, I'm going to click the copy frame button over here. We can see that it's copied what I drew on frame 1 and has placed it on my second frame. From here, I will start to draw the cracks forming on my egg as it hatches. Each time I draw a new piece of the egg cracking, I can copy what I drew on that frame and place it on the next, keeping the egg's design looking consistent and saving me a lot of time. Keep in mind that the more frames you make with gradual alterations, the slower and more true to life your animation is likely to appear. Now I'm going to draw the top of the egg breaking open to show the little chick inside saying hello to the world for the first time. Once again, my trusty eraser tool comes to the rescue for the alterations I want to make to the egg without deleting it entirely. I'll use an old animator's trick of drawing a bit of smoke and debris here to help make it so I don't have to draw every bit of the egg coming apart. Finally, we can see the little chick looking out from the egg with a big old smile. I think I'll call him Scramble, just for a little irony. I also think I'd like to have him be yellow, like most chicks are when they first hatch, but rather than drawing on top of what I've already drawn to make him yellow, I'll use the Color Behind tool. This tool does exactly what the name suggests, and lets you draw whatever color you'd like behind what you've already drawn on screen. Remember that using the color selection box and brush size tool, you can change your brush size and color on the fly. There are even more colors you can access by double clicking here and then clicking anywhere on this picture. Once you're happy with what you've done, feel free to press the play button and see how your animation looks in action. You can use the loop button to loop your animation and even speed up or slow down the speed at which the animation plays with this slider here. When students use Animation-ish, they learn about frames and onion skins and looping, but even more importantly, they learn to express themselves in a way they haven't yet before. And our goal with Animation-ish is to give kids confidence in creating, the same way that Peter was supported when he was in seventh grade. Because when students recognize that 
they have the power to make things that are meaningful to them. That is a huge step toward finding their path in life. Now, we didn't stop with just animation-ish. The next thing we did was to create a course for middle school students that were interested in learning more about animation as a career. This CTE course covers the 12 principles of animation, vocabulary and techniques, and also brings in expertise from our studio team to share insights with students about careers and skills and tips. By the end of this course, students have a portfolio of increasingly skillful animations that they have created. They also know the different roles in a studio and what it takes to get there. And they've practiced over and over the openness and the collaboration and creativity of a great artist and creator. And they can then take those skills into their everyday lives and if they choose to more advanced animation courses in high school and beyond. I'm going to share with you now one of the videos about character design from the course. This is the introduction to a project in which the students get to create their very own characters and then get to experiment with making them move. Our team members, Tone Tyne and Bob Flynn, walk them through tips and their own experiences with character design. Hi there. Let's take a look at the process of designing a character. First, we'll hear from animator Tone Tyne from Fable Vision Studios about the art of drawing for animation. Hi, everybody. I'm Tone Tyne, and uh, I, uh, like you guys, I started off as an animator. I went to school for animation, and then I went to go work at Walt Disney Feature Animation. I worked on um, some films that you may have heard of. I worked on Lion King and Pocahontas and Hercules and Mulan, Tarzan, Toy Story, Fantasia. Right around the time that I was your age, guys, I um, had heard that a lot of the studios like Disney and places like that, they love people that draw cartoons, but they also really like to look at people that know how to draw uh, from life. And so, uh, for example, going to the zoo and drawing animals or taking a drawing class where you're drawing a bowl of fruit or the human body. And so uh, I was really allergic to the idea of that because I love to draw cartoons and I didn't like to draw the realistic stuff. But uh, when I was in about eighth grade, I took a class where I was drawing the human figures where you would have a model standing in the middle of the room and we would all have to draw that person. And it, it, it taught me so much about the way that anatomy works and all of that. In fact, in order to be a great cartoonist, whether you're drawing, you know, animals or humans or whatever, it's really important to know how it's supposed to look before you start kind of exaggerating it and making it look kind of crazy like a cartoon. So even the people that draw SpongeBob, for example, I would imagine that they all can also draw really realistic very well. Um, and it doesn't have to look great, but it just you just have to have a good understanding of how um, joints fit into others and how the bones work and things like that. Let's review. Draw from real life, observing animals, sketching objects, and practicing figure drawing. Understand how forms and movements are supposed to look before exaggerating them. Consider how bones, joints, and muscles work together to make people move. Now let's start to make some characters of our own. Use Fable Vision Learning's worksheets to shape your vision and brainstorm details about your character. Is it a villain, a hero, a healer, an explorer, a class clown, or another character type? Consider, what does your character like and dislike? What do they want? Or what are they afraid of? Then, just like at Fable Vision Studios, make your own wall of inspiration. Like Tone described, start by doing some research. Find realistic images of animals, poses, or other forms. Then display the photographs and sketches that will apply to your character, and post inspirational artwork, colors, toys, quotes, etc. It will be helpful to see these images regularly as you work. Note how Bob Flynn of Fable Vision Studios made several sketches in his process of redeveloping the Zumbinis. But then one afternoon, Scott Osawal sent me an email, a little on the sly, I would say. Um, I opened it up and I saw like his original sketch of the Zumbini, something he made over a decade ago. And so he kind of gave me permission to be like, if you want to play with things a little bit more, 
here's a good starting point. And so we did. And I, you know, so I started you know, sketching a couple iterations of what they might look like, because you know, he'd only drawn a couple Zumbinis, and we have a bunch of Zumbinis to figure out. Um, so you know, trying different hairstyles, and I sent them off to Scott. Pretty quickly, he responded back and was like, Bob, you did it. You figured it out. You were able to channel what I had originally you know, envisioned in the Zumbinis. And so that seemed like a good you know, point to go on. And so we went from there. We started doing turnarounds, and we sent them off to our partner. They loved them, which was a great sign to hear. And then the next step was to post them on the Facebook fan page to make sure that the fans you know, received them well. Give yourself freedom to experiment with your character. Try out different styles and details and make lots of varied sketches. Once you've decided what your character looks like, use the prompts on our character model sheet to sketch your character from different angles and with different emotions. Have fun! Now that we've had our first group of middle schoolers take this course, we actually have student animations created with Animation-ish while taking this course. And so here I'd like to share with you a few quick examples. Thank you for being with us today and letting us share with you. We would love to connect the dots with you, so feel free to email us at info at fablevisionlearning.com. You know, back when Peter was just figuring out what motivated him and what interested him, it was teachers that were willing to see outside of their daily lesson plans to the bigger picture of what education is and can do for a child. We appreciate you and we see you. And when Peter grew up and founded an animation company, he wanted to send that message to teachers. So he, of course, made an animation. So I'm going to leave you with that animation today as an encouragement and thank you and as Peter's way to pay it forward to all the teachers that represent the best parts of the teaching profession. Thank you. Every child is born with a precious flame within, an inner flame of wonder and potential to begin. This inner light illuminates the path that lies ahead, igniting curiosity, keeping passions fed. But at times, this flame is challenged from inside and from out. It can flicker under pressure. It can be smothered by self-doubt. Though a child may sometimes stumble, they are never lost for teachers are protecting that flame at any cost. Along with caring family, it's the teachers who remain by the side of every learner through life's joys and sometimes pain. These keepers of the flame can help and they can guide, for they share that flame of learning that burns brightly from inside. These teachers know a child's heart they value every kind of smart. Teachers help each child to climb higher, further, over time, and own their struggle on their quest to learn and live what they do best. Teachers celebrate the triumphs and give shelter in the storm to keep that guiding light steady, bright, and warm. And so, it's time to shine the light on them these keepers of the flame. We thank them for their passion and we give them high acclaim for their knowledge and research, the science and the art that allows them to be stewards of the minds 
and of the heart. To improve our schools, we have a choice to listen to the teacher's voice, those many voices far and wide who protect each student's flame inside. With expertise to know what's right, to keep each spirit burning bright. So let's listen to our teachers as we imagine and design schools that keep all flames alight and allow every child to shine.